Hi there, my name is Diane Breaking Just Comedy. So for today's video, I decided that it would be fun to read the debut sampler from Tor.com. So I have this 2021 debut sampler. This is basically the first chapter of six debut authors of 2021. And I had this from Ned Galley and I completely forgot about it. Uh, until now. So here are the six books um, that are being sampled. We have In the Watchful City, Summer Sounds, A Marvelous Light, Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters, Flowers for the Sea, and We Shall Sing a Song into the Deep. So I think I actually only know Summer Sounds and that's the one I'm the most excited about. What's fun about this is that it's almost like the try a chapter videos, but this is with uh, debut authors and new releases. I probably won't be doing this in a, in a day, um, but I will come back and update each time I'm reading a chapter. From what I've seen, it's between 10 to 20 pages for each sample. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm actually gonna start with the first sample and it's In the Watchful City by S. Chuilu on a Goodreads. This is expected to be released on August 31st. I guess it's a short story. It's only 192 pages. It has 78 ratings and 60 reviews so far with an average rating of 3.99. And for the genres on Goodreads, it says that it's fantasy, sci-fi, novella and queer. Those are the main ones. I have about 13 ebook pages. I'll get to reading and I'll come back with my thoughts on this one. From what I could tell, this is a story about Anima who uses neo pronouns. And throughout the first chapter, there are different people with different neo pronouns. So basically, Anima seems to be tasked with protecting the city. In order to protect the city, A can possess, I guess the bodies of animals throughout the city through what i think is the called the gleaming goodreads says that it's a complex living network anima is able to channel different living beings by immersing herself in the, the bath a strange visitor named vessel comes in and has a trunk full of little trinkets and peculiar objects that have a story and I think their stories are being told throughout the book. So at first I was like, what is going on? How can A go from being in a bird to being in a raccoon and all that? So that was kind of interesting to figure it out. But yeah, this first chapter was actually really good. I would be interested in finishing this story, especially because it's a novella, so it's not really long and to see where it goes from there i'm back with my oh shit <laughs> oh, yeah. i clicked on it i'm back with my second sample so for this one it's gonna be summer sons by lee mandelo it was a 384 pages and the sample that I had was only 17 pages. It is expected to be published uh, September 28th. So by the time I'm filming this, it still hasn't been out. And it has an average rating of 4.37 stars 
which is really good with 151 ratings and 114 reviews. And the main genres are horror, queer and fantasy and thriller, I guess. So this is an adult book. So I'm actually really excited to read it. I have seen it on tour and all over my Instagram. So yes, I'm excited to try it. It's the story uh, of Andrew and Eddie who were really really close best friends and Eddie went to Nashville because he got accepted early in the graduate program and Andrew was to join him later on to the same program but unfortunately right before he's about to join him uh, Eddie dies so Andrew goes to Nashville and in the chapter basically he's going to pick up Eddie's car at a towing um, lot or whatever. Eddie had a trust fund so he had a lot of money and he had bought a house so Andrew is inheriting everything. So he has to meet uh, the real estate a lawyer. He also has to meet Eddie's roommate whose name is Riley. So it's very interesting. The writing is good. It's very descriptive. From what I can gather, Andrew is able to see specters. I'm not 100% sure yet, but at the end of the chapter, I guess he sees Eddie's specter, but it's kind of a weird monster type specter. So Andrew is like, what the fuck happened? And he doesn't believe that Eddie's killed himself. And so he's gonna try to investigate. So, so far from the first chapter, I'm still super interested. I really want to read this book. So I'm definitely gonna try and get it somehow through my library or something. So now I'm on to my next read. So it'll be the third book I'm reading. I decided to be on the couch and with the golden light from the sunset. It's still kind of empty here, so there might be an echo anyway. This is A Marvelous Light, which is the first book in a series uh, by Freya Marske. This is expected to be published on the 2nd of November in 2021. It has 384 pages. It has a 4.41 star rating so far with 153 ratings and 88 reviews. So it sounds like people are liking it. The main genres are historical fiction, queer, and romance. So that's nice. It does look like there's some fantasy elements to it, so that's interesting. Alright, so I've got about six pages to read, so that's pretty short. Let's see how it goes. Oh, okay, so there is actually chapter two because I was completely lost in this chapter one. Uh, so this one is 16 pages, so I'm gonna read that and I'll come back and see if I learned a little bit more because I'm actually really lost about what is in this story. Maybe I'll look into the synopsis also. Okay, so I just finished. So from what I gathered, the story occurs uh, in England in the 1900s, I'm assuming. There is this person, Robin, who is at his first day in his new job. And it seems like there's been some sort of an 
mistake because he's here to replace someone in this office. He's a government employee and the, this new position, it's basically a bridge between the non-magical world and the magical world. His position is to, it seems that it is to investigate strange occurrences and see if they are magic related or not. And he investigates with a co-worker who is a magician, I guess that's what they call, I'm not really sure. And so they already had some interesting banter, I really liked that. I really liked Robin's character. He's quite negative, but it's in a very fun way. It's pretty strange. So now the first chapter makes much more sense. It seems like the person that he's replacing actually disappeared and potentially it's linked to magic. So it's very cool actually because it does remind me a little bit of the movie uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them just because it's like an older historical but there's magic in it. I really like that. I really like that premise. It's gonna be queer so I'm assuming it's gonna be a romance between Robin and the magical co-worker. So that sounds really fun. I'm actually really interested in continuing this one. It took a little while to get into it but I think where it's going sounds really interesting so it's gonna be easier as I read, I'm sure. So I definitely plan on continue, continuing with that one, for sure. I'm back for the next read. This one is gonna be Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by M.A. Ogden. This was actually published back in February on the 23rd. It's 112 pages, so it's a novella. It has 3.52 average star rating with 293 ratings and 87 reviews. The main genres are science fiction, fantasy and queer and it's possibly a retelling. It also looks like it's a space opera. So it sounds really cool and I definitely am excited to check it out. I have uh, 19 pages to go. Okay, so I just finished. It was interesting. There was definitely a lot of information to take in. It's quite different than the usual setting that we can have in books. From what I understood, humans have been able to adapt to different environments and we are following the daughter of the sea clan lord and so i think that's what makes it a retelling of the little mermaid she actually rejected i guess her clan and her sea world and chose instead the land however now her husband and his people are dying from a plague and she thinks that she knows the solution so she goes to the world witch who was her former lover and they strike a deal the world witch will i guess find a cure for the plague but the world witch wants to be part of some trade contract with her husband anyway it doesn't it's not that big of a deal here but the thing is that she has to follow the world witch to another planet in order to get whatever they need for the cure, I suppose. So that's where we'll get into the space opera. As a novella, I would probably be intrigued to continue. It is really well written, very slow moving in uh, its description, I would say. A very lyrical prose also. I mean, I really liked it. I don't know if I care for the story, so I'm not sure if I would continue with it, but I think it's definitely something worth checking out if that sounds interesting to you. Potentially same hoodie, because I live in it, but different day. I am going to read now the fifth sample, which is Flowers for the Sea by Zin E. Rocklin. This is uh, going to be published on October 19th. It has 4.12 average star rating with 52 ratings and 25 reviews. 
It has 112 pages and the main genres are fantasy, horror, some sci-fi and it's a novella. So I have the first part which is only uh, 3 pages and then I have 12 pages for the first chapter I think. Let's do this! Well, I have to say the writing was visceral. I'm honestly not even sure how to explain what the story is about. We follow Araxi or Araxi, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. She was a commoner who refused to marry a prince and she ended up on an ark pregnant with a child that may be more than human. She's the first person who's able to keep a pregnancy for so long on that ship. She's being ostracized by the people around her. And I guess the world around them is dying, people are dying. I think this is the type of story that you get the full effect if you read it to the end. This just feels like such an intense story. I know Tor has mentioned that it reads like Rosemary's Baby by way of Octavia E. Butler. So if that intrigues you, just check it out. I just don't have much to say about this. It's just already like so intense. This is the sixth and final sample that we have here. This one is We Shall Sing a Song into the Deep by Andrew Kelly Stewart. It came out on March 9th. It has 160 pages, it has an average rating of 3.88 with 371 ratings and 81 reviews. And the main genres are sci-fi, dystopia, post-apocalyptic and religion. So I've actually read this this morning. I had the first chapter, it was 19 pages, so it's pretty much... Uh, averaging the same for each sample that I had, so that was nice. In this one we follow Remy, who is part of a choir of young boys aboard a nuclear submarine that also carries like monk fundamentalists, so it's sort of a, a cult down there. But Remy is actually a girl and that's a secret, nobody knows, apart from the captain who rescued her. Now he's dying and he gave her the launch keys to the missile because I guess the whole mission on this submarine is to release the missile against the godless whom I'm assuming are the people above the surface or something like that. As you can tell, there's a lot of talk about religion and extremism. The style is interesting. It has a staccato sort of writing where the sentences are short and most of them are not full sentences. I probably would not continue with that even if it's a short story or a novella. I, I get where this is going and I'm not really interested in anything that has that strong of a religion weaved into it. Also, I'm not a big fan of apocalyptic stories usually, so it's just not my taste. It's just not something for me. Hopefully it's uh, for someone else. I'm just gonna go back and do an overview of the whole debut sampler that I got and what I thought of it. So this was really interesting to read the first chapters. I actually really enjoyed that. However, most of the books in there were either novellas or short stories. However, novellas are not something that I pick up often and I don't think this would necessarily 
make me pick up more novellas but if the samples were specifically just books people would pick those books sooner rather than later so i think there are two that i definitely want to pick up from having read the first chapters it's summer suns by lee mandelo it was previously on my tbr anyway but this really gave me an insight on the writing to see if i would enjoy it and i did so definitely i'm looking forward to reading that book and also a marvelous Light by Freya Marsky. I had no intention of reading this. I don't think it was on my radar. I don't think I had heard about it before, but the story was just so much fun and it really is something that I think I would love. The plot, the world and all that historical fiction mixed with magic. It just sounds really fun to me and I did enjoy the writing style also. So that's definitely something I'm gonna add to my TBR. And in terms of the short stories. I, I enjoyed In the Watchful City and maybe I would like to see where this is going. The other ones, I think we've got some good ones here, but I don't think that they necessarily are appealing to me or to my taste at the moment. So this was super fun to do. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you think I should do the same one in 2022. This is a really fun way uh, for publishers to put some books on people's radars. I think most of them I hadn't heard of. I think some of them tend to be a bit more on the sci-fi side, which is why it's less my taste. If any of those sounded interesting to you, I would definitely encourage you to pick them up or check them out. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to uh, see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.